Welcome! Today the topic is 7 days to die server setup. And not on your PC, but on a hosted game provider. With Alpha 17 stable being out, it's a great time to get a hosted server for you and your friends. I will be covering some basic pros and cons, and then I will cover a service provider that I have been using since 2017, and how to set it up, update and connect to it. While I won't be able to cover everything in one video, I will give you the basics for how to get started and if there's enough requests for it, I can do a more in depth as well. This video is already going to be fairly long as I want to make sure that you get the things right the first time so you get to enjoy things working rather than be frustrated that you selected something wrongly and are not happy with it. I also want to be clear that this video is not, I repeat, not sponsored and paid for by Pink Perfect. It's entirely my own idea and initiative. And to be clear, they did not pay me to make this video at all. I did, however, reach out to them and ask if they would be willing to give me, or actually you, a discount for signing up and they've gladly agreed to give a 10% recurring monthly discount if you sign up with the code VEDUI during your sign up and I'll show that. I'll provide the links below including my affiliate link which if you use it helps support my channel with a small affiliate referral bonus. You pay the same and you get a 10% discount every month. Thank you Pink Perfect, and thank you. So why would you use a hosting provider instead of running a dedicated server on your PC? Well, let's break it down. Some of the pros of using hosting provider is that your server is going to be up 24-7, 365. So it's going to be up every day, all the time. This is a huge deal if you have multiple people playing on it. Secondly, you don't need to keep an extra server running at your home, which can save you a fair bit of electricity and uh, you don't have to pay for an additional PC. If you use your gaming PC to also host a server, you will be splitting all the resources across both programs. So if you're playing in the client, the host might be affected because, well, it might not have enough CPU cycles, for instance. With the hosting provider, you also get nice tools to work with the server to manage upgrades, patches, backups and restores. These can be really helpful. You also have access to their customer support, which in my personal experience at least has been outstanding in how quickly they reply. Sometimes it's literally within minutes. It's always been helpful and friendly. Of course, mileage may vary, but for me it's really been really good. Another pro is that you can have multiple people to help manage the server through additional sub-user logins. This is very helpful and I use this for a number of my server where I have trusted people from my team who actually go in and they'll restart, they'll fix whitelisting and everything and I don't even have to be logged in, I could be happily sleeping. Modding is also usually very simple. You select it in a list, it installs and you're good to go. And that it's a lot easier than having to download things through a mod launcher or something. So what are some of the possible downsides? Well, obviously you don't have full control. You often get FTP access, you get file manager access, but you don't have access to all the underlying executables. Some people prefer to have the full access being the power user. The hosting provider also manages the maintenance times of the server and that could impact once in a while. And if you run a dedicator yourself, you decide when you're going to do PC maintenance. Obviously, you have to pay for it. Normally, it's around 10 to 12 USD a month and up depending on the specs that you choose. Although running a PC 24-7 costs a pretty penny as well in power bills. But split among two or three or four people, it's only a few bucks each, which is really affordable. And of course, if you're only playing single player, you wouldn't bother about having a dedicated server anyway. The last item relates to the server location, which can be somewhat restricted depending on where you are located and which server provider you're using. While hosting providers normally have a number of global data centers for their game servers, it might not be in your city. It might not even be very near. And if there's no slots left for that location, especially if it's high demand, that means you might have to choose one that is slightly further away. This might or might not be a big deal. I've run a server in the US connecting from Singapore and Asia and it's been just fine for me. Yes, there is some ping, but it's not been really bad, but it's something you have to take into account. You might not want to have a server in Australia if you're based in Europe or vice versa, for instance. But this is also something you have to take into consideration when you're choosing your server provider. I'm pretty fortunate in that Pink Perfect actually has servers available in Singapore Though I don't use them because most of my player base are in Europe and in the US, so I choose to have a server in the US instead. 
you have to take all these things into consideration. But the nice thing is that you can just try it out. Often a 48-hour free trial or likewise is available or just sign up for a month and see how it works for you and your specific use case. At the cost of a few Starbucks coffee, it's really not that bad, especially if you share it with a couple of friends. But let's assume you're keen to try it out and you want to sign up. So as I mentioned, I've used Pink Perfect since 2017 for multiple game servers now. I've done a 7 Days to Die, Conan Exiles, Ark Survival Evolved, and I find the cost is reasonable. Support has been outstanding and performance for what I pay is good. It has allowed me to offer game servers for the VEDA community, something I want to continue doing as well. As always, I can't promise that your experience is going to be the same as mine, which has been really good, but I wouldn't make this video if I didn't think it was a good option. Let's head over to the Pink Perfect website and do use my affiliate link if you don't mind please, as well as the discount code VEDUI for 10% recurring monthly discount. At first look, it might look a bit daunting. But let's do this step by step. Naturally, you can run a number of other game servers as well, and often the setup is pretty similar for all the non-game specific items. But let's look at the first step, which is to hit, well, game servers, or you can go down here, but let's do game servers. And let's have that load, and it will show all the games that you can actually have servers for that Pink Perfect offers. Seven Days to Die is one of the top popular choices usually, so go ahead and click on that one and it should be opening up another page here. Now take a moment to read through what you get here, it's important that you do. This is also where you can request a 48 hour trial if that's your preference. But let's look at some of the standard features here. Now you see you have instant server setup and it usually is really fast. You have global locations, which is really good because no matter where you are, you probably have something reasonably close to you. It's also using enterprise hardware or ported. It's not just PC hardware. They have a money back guarantee. Nice as well. I do have a website as well, video42.com that I am hosting with Pink Perfect because you get free web hosting. A small one, but it's still free. You have free debranding. So if you brand it as Pink Perfect, you get a small additional discount or you just pay the regular price if you don't have their Pink Perfect branding. Customer support, obviously. You have the game panel and you have DDoS protection, which I guess can help if people try to cause trouble. So after this, you have to select which currency you're going to be paying in. So I'm going to select the USD one because that's the one I'm using. You can pay in Euro and, and a Pound as well. And then you get to the next stage, which is where you select all the options. And this is the actual ordering page. Make sure you read things carefully and don't just click through without reading properly. It might end up having a setup that you don't really want to have and then you have to go through customer service to fix it. And ultimately, that slows down your enjoyment. You want to get things right the first time. First up is the billing cycle and there is some discounts. If you pay monthly, no discount, quarterly, 5%, semi-annually, 10 annually, 15%. That's something you can decide yourself. The actual eventual price that you have depending on what you've chosen is on the right side. So let's assume you just do a three month price, which means you get a slight discount, but of course it's counting now three months. So let's go back to one because it's easier to check. So let's have the one month price, no billing cycle discount. You also have the number of game slots that the game will have. And if you pump this up, you'll see that the pricing also goes up. For a normal server, 12 is pretty okay. This is concurrent players. It's not the total player base. It means that you can have 12 players online at the same time, which is pretty good. You also have TeamSpeak 3. Now this used to be a good option, but now people just use Discord, so I would just skip this one, save the money for other options. And if we scroll down, we get to some of the other options. First, you have to select which location you wanna have. And as you look through this one, you're gonna see some of them are sold out. And you see the few one here or there. It depends on how many servers there are and how many they've stood up in order to account for new customers coming on board. Some of them have a slight extra premium depending on location. You can select the extreme performance, which is better hardware, but it's also a lot more costly. So let's say I'm going to do one in Atlanta, just a regular pricing. Next is whether you want to host it on SSD. I generally do this one. Because if you have SSD on your PC, you'd know that it loads things a lot faster and saves. And for a USD or two, that can really help you make a smoother experience for your game server. For support level, I generally just start with normal support. If you really end up wanting more support, if you have a really big server, maybe then it's worthwhile to go for platinum support. For normal starting server, I probably would not be bothering with this. 
We also get to the server branding. By allowing them to have some branding, you'll see that we get a slight discount for that as well. It's just in this case, 64 US cents. Of course, it's a percentage of the whole cost but I think it's worthwhile. Saving a little bit of money just to having it branded by Pink Perfect is a win-win situation. Something to also consider is whether you want to add on additional memory. If you play with mods or do a ton of building by many people on the server, you could conceivably run into memory issues. So adding a memory later on is an option. When I ran a vanilla 7 Days to Night server for a small group, I didn't need it. But having a larger group on a modded one of the walkers, I did add on some memory because it does require more. My recommendation is to consider it only when you notice that the RAM usage is going up and hitting the limits. Else you just have idle RAM that you've paid for, but you don't use. And as I mentioned, you can add it on later when you want to. We then come to the CPU priority. Now you have normal priority, you have above normal priority, which comes as a slight premium, and you have a high priority. The way it works is that there are multiple game servers on the same physical hardware. Having a higher CPU priority might give you a smoother performance if the game requires a lot of CPU and other games are using a lot of CPU at the same time. If you want the best, you add on priority. You might not need it, so starting at normal or possibly above normal priority might be the way to go and only upgrading later on if you see that as being an issue. And now we've selected the basic game options and you'll see the order summary will be reflecting your choices as well. Now, a few additional items. Host name is the server. Let's put in VED here. And Archon password, you're gonna need that later. Just type in what do you want to have. Of course, you shouldn't type in what I typed in. Make sure you type in something and save it down. If you do need to migrate from another hosting provider, they do offer that service as well. It does cost some money, but it can be useful if you don't wanna do that yourself or you don't know how to do that yourself. But when you're done, make a final review, then hit continue. And now we get to the review and checkout page. And this is where you should look through and see exactly what you selected see what the price is, make sure everything is correct. And this is where you go, you type in VEDUI. Make sure you do that and you validate code and you should see you have a 10% recurring discount. And this applies for every month that you are using this server. When this looks good, hit checkout. And you finally come to the checkout page, which is the final page in making the order. And this is where you put in all your personal information, you know, a first name, last name, your address, etc. They also wanna know where you found them. You have to put in your password, which is important, and you'll see you have the actual cost that you have to pay. And in this case, it's 1170 for whatever we select. And now you can pay with the credit card, you can have a PaySafe card, bank transfer, or PayPal. So you just put in your payment details and you can join their mailing list if you want to. You tick in, I have read and agreed to the terms of service, and you complete the order, you click that. But hold on a moment. Let's say you run into some issues. Maybe you have a questions. Maybe something seems to not work. What do you do? The best way I found is go to contact us. So let's click that one. Opening a ticket is usually a good way of getting support. Just type in whatever question you have, fill in your details and submit it. And they will get back to you as soon as they can so they can answer whatever query you have. But let's assume you don't have any questions. You filled everything out. You put in your password, your personal details, your payment details. You've ticked in here and you complete your order. Tick. Now, what happens? Well, you will be getting an order confirmation email. So check your email box. It'll state that, well, let's have a look at mine that I set up. They've changed the email format slightly, but generally the information is the same. As you can see, it has all the details and it tells you to hold on and they'll send you an email when things are set up. So hold on for what? Well, just go have dinner or have lunch, have a coffee. They will contact you when the server is ready for you to proceed. Eventually, your patience will be rewarded and you'll receive notice from Pink Perfect that everything is completed. Don't try to log in and touch anything until you receive this notice because it can delay installation if something goes wrong. But I'm going to assume that everything is well. What are the next steps? Firstly, you need to decide which game version you want to have. Hosting providers generally install the latest stable version which exists at the time, which for now is Alpha 17, but if you watch this later on, it could be Alpha 18, Beta 1, Beta 2, or whatever. It doesn't really matter, the same thing applies. And regardless of which version you choose, your server is likely already running, which can be seen from the status here. However, you clearly want to configure it and not use the base config, so go ahead and stop it. We're also gonna head down to the configuration files area. Much of what I'm going to show you is exactly the same as configuring a normal dedicated server on your PC. Only the UI might be a bit different and some of the file names are different as well. But beyond that, the settings work exactly the same way. 
The first one we're looking at is the pingperfect.xml, which is actually the server config.xml file. I suspect they don't want to expose some of the paths which are defined in the server config, so that's why they have a configuration editor. As you can see at the top, you can choose which version it is, and we want to have alpha 17, so we're going to leave that one. You also have the general settings for your server, whether it's going to be a public or private, the name, the description, and probably a server password. Further down, you have the world setting. So take a look at these as well, whether you're going to do random world generation or Naviscan, as well as the size of it. You have some of the new settings for Alpha 17, such as the zombie settings, how fast they walk, sprint or nightmare mode, and you can play around with that yourself. You also want to make sure probably that the max spawn zombies is 50 or 60. Default is usually 30, which might be too little, especially if you have a number of players online at the same time. It might seem like the world is very sparsely populated by zombies. At the bottom, you have the security settings, so make sure you change the password and decide whether you want to use ESC or not. You also probably want to disable talent unless you're going to log into the console. Either way, change the passwords and make sure you don't lose them. When you're happy with it, hit save and we'll go back to the previous page. The next one we're going to have a look at is the pingadmin.xml, which is actually the server admin.xml. One important thing to do here is just put in your own Steam ID for the admin level permissions. There is a default here that you probably want to clear out and put in your own. If you can't find your own, go to a service such as Steam ID Finder or something and look for the Steam 64 ID. You can also edit the various commands and the permissions that are required. And there's a number of them here. And you can add on your own as well. The final thing we're going to look here is the whitelist and the blacklist. If you're having problems with certain players, you can always ban them by putting in the Steam ID in the blacklist. And you can also turn your server into whitelisted one. By doing that, only players which have been whitelisted in this line, and you, of course you have to add on individual lines for individual players, only these ones can log in even if they have the server password. This can be useful if you're only playing with a few friends for instance and you don't want random people to be able to hack their way in. When we're happy with this, as before, hit save. The final file we're going to look at is the web permissions.xml. If you've run a dedicated server before, you might know what this is. This allows you to have a web map that you can watch online to see the map, to see where players are, maybe see where the zombies are. If you played around with this one on a dedicated server before, it works exactly the same way. If you haven't, read up on it or just leave it for now. It's not a critical piece. There are various functions that you can also access through the panel. You can manage your mods, you can go to the file manager, you can check your logs, you can do Steam update if there's a version update, you can check the web console, current activity, you can reset the world, be careful. You can also back up your world and it's recommended to do that every once in a while. And if you have an issue with something going wrong, you can restore from a previous backup. Once you're happy with the configuration, you just hit start and it will start up the server. If you do need to generate a map such as you're using the random world generation, it might take a while before you can actually connect to it. The connection information is this one, which is the IP followed by the port. It also has the Archon information and the FTP to the server. So what do you do if you still have problems? There are two ways. One, you can go to the knowledge base where there are a number of articles covering not just the game servers, but also how Pink Perfect works and how the panel works. If that doesn't help you, you can go to the, ask the support team. Opening a ticket is usually a very good way of getting a quick response. And you can do that through the support page. Just put in whatever information you have on your queries and normally Pink Perfect staff will come back to you asking for more information or providing you with steps that you can try out in order to resolve the issue that you have. But that's about it. I've now walked you through how to order a game host from Pink Perfect and how to do the basic game configuration to get yourself up and running. As you can see, it's really straightforward if you simply take your time and do it step by step. You should now be able to enjoy your 7 days to die server. And of course, you can tweak all the settings and configurations just like you could for a dedicated server on your PC. Don't be afraid to play around with things until you're happy with the settings. And have your friends connect and play as well. If you have any particular questions that I could cover in a future video, do let me know in the comment section below. I will put all the links in the description for accessing the Pink Perfect page through my affiliate link and do make sure you use the Vidui discount code for that 10% recurring discount. I hope you have a great experience with your hosted server and I'll catch you again next time. Special thanks to the great patrons supporting the channel. If you would like to join the Vedit community and support these videos, do follow the Patreon link.